welcome back. Uh, thank you, Justine. I'm so happy to be here. What are we going to learn? Okay, so today I thought we'd continue our discussion from last time. Firstly, I'd like to know if you were able to implement any of the, the, any of the suggestions I made regarding the Mediterranean diet. Um, so I have. Um, I definitely started the smoked salmon works great for me. Um, still struggling a bit with the less meat, but I'll get there. Okay. So one of the foundations of the Mediterranean diet is the category of grains and cereals. And this is an area that many people are confused about. There is a lot of mixed messages out there about carbohydrates and whether we should or shouldn't be eating them, especially for health and disease, disease states. So when it comes to grains and cereals that I'm gonna discuss with you today, we're gonna to focus on the whole grains, which are the ones that are highlighted in the Mediterranean diet and why these are so important and should be foundational in our day-to-day -day life. Okay, I've got no idea what you mean by whole grain. Can you okay. explain? Okay, so first of all, I wanna to explain to you what the benefit is of including these in our diets. The fiber component of whole grains is what we really see to be incredibly beneficial. What this helps to do is reduces incidence of cardiovascular disease, it reduces blood pressure, it assists in preventing diabetes and controlling diabetes. Fiber? Fiber. Wow. And it also helps from an anti-inflammatory point of view to allow people to maintain better digestive health and through better digestive health what starts in the gut assists the rest of the body as well especially when it comes to inflammation. So what a whole grain is if we think about it, I want to show you, for example, here is the oats, okay, which I just explained to you last time. But why is it so important to have the entire product as opposed to something that is derived from it or more processed as a result? Here is also, for example, quinoa is an example. Can you see? that it looks like the whole grain. Yeah. It is, there's little bits and pieces on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's not completely refined either. Okay, yeah. so why this becomes important is because there are three components to a whole grain. When wheat is grown, when oats are grown, when barley is grown, the actual plant that comes out of it has got three different levels to it. It has an outer layer, which is called the bran, I don't know if you've, I'm sure bran is a term that most people like understand. Like bran flakes. Exactly. Or fiber. Exactly. Okay. Then there's a term that not many people are very familiar with, which is called the germ. That doesn't sound good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get the germ. Not in this day and age. And then there's the inner component, which is the endosperm. What the endosperm is, is the bulk of the grain. And this is generally what we end up eating when a whole grain, when a source of rich fiber that comes from a carbohydrate source has been stripped of the outer layers, has been stripped of the bran and stripped of the germ. So let me explain to you why the outer areas are so important. So that outer layer of bran is really where the majority of fiber comes from. And why we need fiber, which is, as I explained to you before, is predominantly for digestive health. It also helps to keep our cardiovascular system in check. It helps to lower our blood pressure, as I described. It also helps us fight against many inflammatory conditions, cancer being one of them as well. So this type of fiber is incredibly important. If we don't get enough fiber in our diet, what ends up happening is that we are more susceptible to these kind of illnesses. Then the one layer in from there is which we call the germ, which nobody really knows so much about, actually has a lot of antioxidants in it, as well as B vitamins and minerals as well. All of these layers do contain a degree of your different vitamins, especially your B vitamins. And what the B vitamins do, things like riboflavin and niacin, which are all big words that not many people know about, are essential for our body's functioning. It's um, particularly like a neural development that is part of the role with it as well. So if we are deficient in any of these vitamins or we're not necessarily aware of it but it does affect our health. Okay. So how would we know if, if we need to increase um, 
the, the fibre or the grains? So in general, people who suffer with gastric disturbances, things like more constipated, or they're suffering with diarrhea as well, these are two extremes. However, it's always a good indication to me as to whether they are receiving enough fibre in their diet. So somebody who is more constipated typically is not getting enough fibre in, or may also not be drinking enough water to go with the fibre that they're already including. I want to discuss the actual um, endosperm now, which is the main component of grains. And this endosperm, once we've stripped the bran and we've stripped the, the germ layer, is where we derive a lot of the carbohydrate and protein component of the product. So if you are using white flour to cook with, this is where it's coming from. If you are buying pastas and um, couscous, which is the white grain, this is where it's coming from. It's not to say that there's anything wrong with it or that it's bad. It is just that it always needs to be balanced out with more of your whole fibers. It's missing half of, of Correct. What, it, what it is. Correct. Okay. So I've got some examples here for you today to see what natural products we can use and what whole foods we continue to implement in our diet in order to be able to include these in their whole capacity. I have to have that because otherwise um, I, I would have no idea. So okay. thank you. Pleasure. Okay, so let me start. So for example, uh, last time we discussed and you tasted yeah. the oats, yes, okay, which I know you enjoyed. We just needed to add some sweetness for you. <laughs> so here again is the raw oat, which is more of the rolled oat, the whole oat that we really want to use more of. I'll tell you a trick that I use with this as well, is that I often in cooking, particularly if I'm using red meat for cooking like a mince, I hide oats in my cooking process as well. So I grind the oats and I add it into the mincemeat in order to reduce the amount of saturated fat that our bodies are absorbing from the food wow. and it helps to thicken it as well and it gives it an amazing taste. And my children don't know that it's there. So. I think that's very sneaky, but if it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> But, but you say it reduces the saturated fat? It reduces the saturated fat. It reduces the amount of cholesterol that your body absorbs as well. Oh, so it's very that. incredibly healthy. For breakfast in the morning, there are some days that I just feel like something more wholesome. Besides the oats, you need a change. So I would take two slices of a whole grain bread. If you can see here that there are more seeds and more grains in it, even the darkness in color is suggestive of the fact that it has more fiber, which comes from the whole grain. And this, I would then add, one of my absolute favorites, Absolutely. is peanut butter. Love, but love, love. this one is the unsweetened version, okay. okay, which a lot of my clients do complain about. However, I always suggest to them, if they're going to add the unsweetened peanut butter, maybe put a little bit of honey on it so that you're in control of the amount of sugar that you're adding, as opposed to buying something that is going to already have too much sugar in it. That's my favorite, love peanut okay. butter. Yeah. Right, okay. okay, so that together with the grains. Then when it comes to snack time, if you're not choosing fruits or you're not choosing yogurt, lovely snack up options, my kids all time favorite, is if I take some whole popcorns, as opposed to buying the microwave version. I have a very clever popping machine at home that is an air popper that does not use any oils. You can add a little bit of oil to that. You can add a teaspoon of oil to cook with it and a little bit of salt, but it is much better than buying popcorn out or using the microwave popcorn options, which have got a lot of the chemicals in them. Okay. But if you can see here, the actual whole grain is included which means that it contains both the bran and the germ and the endosperm okay even when you eat it once it's popped you can taste that difference okay other snack ideas are to have these wonderful whole grain crackers as you can see they've also got some oats on it but these have been taken from whole grains and created into a wonderful cracker and this is great to perhaps put some cottage cheese on with that May I just ask you something yes. for somebody like me? If we're looking from a diet control point of view, how many of these crackers could I have equal to equal to a, a slice bread. of bread? So in general, you're looking at about two to three crackers like this. Okay. 
would be this equivalent in carbohydrate content to about a slice of bread. Then, one thing that my family love is a bulgur wheat salad. Something that not many people are aware of that they can make and it really is super easy. So you take the raw bulgur and you boil it up on the stove. Into this I've added some carrots and peppers, a little bit of coriander and some celery. And then the dressing that I added there as well was a little bit of olive oil and vinegar and a little bit of honey for flavor as opposed to sugar. So a bit of salt, you can, you can add whatever vegetables you want in, but this is a great addition to a lunchtime or dinner time, which is a more unique way of introducing grains as opposed to the typical brown rice or whole wheat pasta. Perfect, that looks delicious. And then some other tips for you. Here is um, quinoa. As I said, you've got the, um, the whole grain. This is great also to add to stews, into curries. You can use it to thicken a little bit as well. You can have ser porridge from You can quinoa. have quinoa porridge, yeah, yes. I've heard of that. Absolutely, that sounds good. absolutely. Uh, and then the final grain that I've got to show to you today, here is barley. And barley itself, can you think of some nice ideas of what you would include with that? I remember my mom makes barley salad and she used to put some nuts and a few little raisins in it. So like barley, to include that into soups makes it a very rich dish. The other places to include it into stews as well or casseroles as well. And it really just helps, as you can see again, the same as with the popcorn kernel, this really does include the entire whole grain in the process. Do we need a grain at every meal? So that's a very good question. And the ideal is yes, certainly at breakfast and lunch at dinner, in order to be able to receive the carbohydrates that you need, the B vitamins that you're going to get from them as well, and the fiber content. I have a very, it's playing on my mind. Carbohydrate for me is a potato. Um, if I have a potato, can I include one of these or no? Another good question. So variety is important. If you are looking from purely a health point of view, you can include some potato and another grain at the same meal. However, if you eat too many of these grains all together, it also becomes taxing on the body because they all introduce carbohydrate. There is glucose as the basis for all of this and what ends up happening is your body has to naturally then work to lower your blood sugar. So it's always important to ensure that the quant total quantity of carbohydrate that you're eating at a meal, be it with breads or other grains or potatoes, never exceeds a certain amount in order to make sure that you are still eating a moderate and balanced diet. So this, so really what I heard from this is that, that any kind of carbohydrate is going to become a sugar. Correct, correct. And that's not a bad thing. Our body needs that. It's just about the quantity and how we put it all together. Does that make sense? Yes, a lot to absorb, but sensible. Okay. For sure. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. My pleasure. Thank you for coming today.